on this abandoned episode of the NES Pursuit. Okay, let's find stuff. I'm thinking they're going to have someone out here is going to have some. We got to find something. Let's, let's do it. Griff and NES Addict are in South Carolina hunting for deals in the depths of the country. Exactly where I want Perfect. to be. I thought it was cheaper than he was going to go. Uh, yeah, for me, I would definitely agree that it was way cheaper than I thought. Griff sets his eyes on some vintage TMNT figures that may be the price he needs. And when he tells me five bucks each, I'm like, okay, that's actually not that bad. NES Addict finds a reseller that has NES games that are indeed uncommon games. And he should have added it up to be about 80 bucks. But this guy's like, uh, $65, $55. The boys have to take some risks as they find a deal that seems too good to be true. Was it? Yeah, so for five bucks, I mean, so we don't know if it works or not. I went home that night, I plugged that Wii U gamepad in. Strap your saddlebags for country crimes, western wonders, flea market mystery, and so much more. This is the NES Pursuit. He made a mistake. Oh, the rookie mistake. It's okay. So I'm in South Carolina, and it's time to go game hunting the good old fashioned way. I'm headed to a place called the Jockey Law. I'm with my buddy, the NES Addict. It's me, NES Addict, and I'm learning how to film as we speak. He's like, you gotta go to this place. It's, it's a little bit out there. It's a little bit in the middle of nowhere. There's a lot of uh, more middle of nowhere Southern people. Be ready for some, some yee daddies, some yee haws, and buckle up and get ready because it's time to game hunt in like, the real wild, like Deliverance Wild. Let's go. All right, today we are at the Anderson Jockey Lot, which I know nothing about, never been here, but. So we're here, and yeah, NES Attic was right. This is like nowhere swap meet, nowhere land, but I like it. Is, is Redneck offensive? No. Redneck hill, Hillbilly? kind of swap meet flea market place, so hopefully we find some stuff here with NES Attic, by the way. Because, like I said, it feels like the real wild. There's trinkets everywhere. It's really cool, they have like a lot of different Pokemon balls right here. <laughs> I should buy one of those for my son, he would love that. For, for, oh, they have to look at this. Uh, Ricky and I used to actually buy like a decent amount of belt buckles. Randomness, there's no, not even really, to be honest, not even really like actual video game reseller booths. There's like one maybe. So Jay, when's the last time you used a VHS rewinder? I don't know that I've ever used a VHS rewinder. But for the most of this place, what I see as we're looking around, random, 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 random everywhere. Look at this place. It's like uh, this, it's just a, a swap meet waiting to be set up. It makes me want to own a booth, you know? This is where a Southeast game machine is going to be held this year. So this is just getting excited. As every booth that I'm walking by, I'm like, yes, this is what I want to see. Basically nothing on your table that reminds me of video games. Because when I find that booth, they're going to not care about the price, plain and simple. I was getting This is bigger than I thought. I didn't know it was gonna go all the way back here. Also, I see a giant taco stand back there. Dude, I was here and nobody invited me, like always. I actually have like a weird soft spot for some of this old stuff. Yeah. Because it's the kind of stuff my dad would have around the house, even though he didn't smoke. My dad wasn't a smoker. You're right. So walking around, walking around, we haven't really found any gaming or toy stuff in a while. Been kind of cruising. But then all of a sudden we see this booth with this guy that has toys. But it's not like, you know, Fisher Price toys and kind of junky toys lying around. It's like toys toys. We got a bunch of Tweedles. I say it's, in one it's a whole bunch of different ones. He said they don't really have like a specific price in mind yet or anything like that. So. And we see right away, it's Ninja Turtle stuff. Yeah. 
And also, there's a lot of vintage Ninja Turtle stuff, which is really cool and really exciting, but again, you never know prices. So he has a, a, a vehicle. Yeah, I got like oh, two, it's Mondo two Geckos. Yeah, this guy has a skateboard. So I asked this guy how much are the Ninja Turtles, and he says five bucks each, and I'm holding three at this point. Yeah. Uh, uh, I got that one. It's Ricky the Turtle. It's Ricky the Turtle. Ricky. I knew I'd find you. <laughs> and when he tells me five bucks each, I'm like, okay, that's actually not that bad. Oh, oh this one right here. Yeah. yeah. And then you got that wind up one. And before I even say anything or ask for any cheaper price, he just straight up goes, or if you want, you can take all for $20. And there was about eight of them. So 20 for all? Mm -hmm. Well, no brainer. You, you want to do that? Do it. All right. No brainer, well, you have the <laughs> I'm not a math guy like two dollars and something cents each. So as soon as he said that, I was like, there's eight here, but it's like two something each. I'm not even gonna think about that. Oh, but yeah. dude, so at first he was like, hey, five a piece, uh, you know, for here? about three of them right here. But then he ended up saying, dude, if you just take the whole lot, he literally added like five more. For toys, when you're in the wild, even of course at stores, but two each, that's, that's what flea markets and jockey lots are for. So I'm glad I'm at the jockey lot with my friends. Yay. Absolutely gonna pick these up. I love that I'm getting these because I now have way more Ninja Turtles than I thought I would have when I started collecting them and I really haven't spent that much money doing it. So you see, flea markets in the wild, it's happening slowly but surely I owe it to the good luck of the NS Addict. Yeah, dude, Retro Liberty, the good stuff. Hey, remember that channel? That was Billy and Jay. Yeah. Back in uh No, it was, silly, it was Silly and Che. Silly and Che, yeah. that's right. Disrespect to E.T. Wow, E.T. really went home, bro. If it was like... <laughs> nice! You can come with me. I think game. this is, this is, this white Ricky is better than the brown Ricky. <gasps> no, no! Coming, how are you? What are you doing? Alright, so we're walking around and we're just looking for whatever. We do come across this one reseller, but he has some random rare NES games. Like we have Daydream and Davey. 15 bucks. Daydream and Davey, you know that? Bucks. Trog, I found a Beetlejuice. So I'm thinking like, let's bundle this package up. Robocop, Caveman Games, Batman. These places are like pretty much right on too, and just a, a little bit less, so that's good. So I asked the guy like, hey, what can you do for this? <laughs> and he should have added it up to be about 80 bucks. But this guy's like, 65, $55? And I'm like, you know, sure, let's do 55. And he gives me like this amazing deal. And yeah, I just had to seal the deal. 55 bucks, let's get these NES games and, and I got them, snagged them all. Daydream and Davey, uncommon game. Unco it's funny because it's like, when you pull out games like this, we've seen games a thousand times, but like we were talking about this earlier with the, something on the Wii the other day. But it's like anytime you pull something out, again, at places like this, you see the same faded crap. Right. Over and over and over, the same game. I was watching Jay get these NES games and I have to admit it kind of reminded me of like back in the day game hunting because it was like the less common games and he got them for a good price. So when I watched him do that, I was excited. I just felt like the, the worlds were aligning and all of this wild, wild flea market finding NES games, even though it was from a, a, re a reseller booth. The deals were good, the games were on color. Know, like Beetle ju juice right now does sell, and again, we're not about selling, but it does sell for like 40 bucks. So my favorite game of that lot would probably be Beetlejuice, just because I know that's like an AVGN game, and I'm always looking for those just to have in the collection. So another AVGN game off the list. These two are in really good condition. Beetlejuice is in perfect condition, but I guarantee you can clean this up nice. Oh yeah, it'll clean up nice. You absolutely can. Dang, it. you're like Ricky. I'm like Ricky. But not brown. <laughs> oh, no. So by the time that he dropped the 25 bucks off, I thought it was like right in that sweet spot, exactly where I wanted Perfect. to be. I thought it was cheaper than he was gonna go. Uh, yeah, for me, I would definitely agree that it was way cheaper than I thought. Much prettier than this? No, absolutely not. All right, so another thing this guy has that I've been kind of eyeing 
is this really awesome new version of Castle Grayskull. So I'm, you know, I got some money left and I'm thinking, what does this guy want for this thing? So I kind of just throw out a number, like, hey, like, what are you asking for this? Are you maybe a hundred bucks? And he's like, yeah, actually, that's actually exactly what I want. So I looked at my wallet, I'm thinking I have close to a hundred, I have $92. So I basically lay it all on the table. I'm like, dude, if you take 92, Cash. I got it. Finally it happened. You might say that's Hey, you never know, you never know. Here we go, Castle Grayskull. And he said, you know what, man, I'll do that for you. There's a little bit of box damage, so sealed the deal. Got the brand new Masters of the Universe Castle Grayskull for 92 bucks, and it's gonna look sweet in the game room. Now I had Castle Grayskull as a kid, so uh, seeing the new version of it, you know, really invokes some nostalgia. He-Man is actually one of the first toys I ever remember playing with when I was a kid. It was He-Man and superpowers. So anytime I see He-Man, it takes me way back to like 1984. When we walked up to the game lot, before we even walked up to the whole place, the first thing he said is, look at that castle base Grayskull. And I love that nostalgic feeling. So He-Man is legit. And he gave it to me for $94. So I thought that was a good deal. That is a great deal. I'm not gonna lie, when you walked away with this and those games, a little tear came down my eye, especially while wearing the shirt. Yeah, Retro Liberty. Yeah, man, that was... Did it take you back to the past? It totally took me back to the past. It was awesome. I just felt like Jade wanted to go. That's a really good game. This is the kind of flea markets where like if you get like lost a little, we walked around a little and like we were like through some back area where it was like kind of set up, but not really set up. So we were walking out, looking around this jockey lot. We went down some like back door place where they didn't really know sure where we'd go and this is where we're at. We, we opened the back door again to deliverance. We were back there, I heard the banjos playing. I heard like a vulture. I think I heard like an eagle caw with like the, like the actual America sound on it. I think Bubba Sue lives out here. It was, it was everything I want in game hunting. Yeah. Oh yeah, this place is, we found the way. There's more people now. You know what they say, if it makes you happy, buy it. So we're walking. We pull up to this booth. This guy's got nothing random crap on the table, but I see a Wii U gamepad. How you doing? And I thought to myself in my brain, Jay, NES addict, he has a Wii U kiosk, but I noticed that he has a black gamepad on there, which is technically the better Wii U. But I was like, oh, I mean, clearly he could use the white gamepad. It'll look better on the kiosk. That's what's supposed to be there. So I'm like, dude, you, you should buy this. And I kind of like stall, give him the time to do it. And he's like, hmm, like really starts debating. And in my head, I'm like, why, why aren't you buying this? And I could tell right away that NES Addict isn't like the risk taker, even though it was only five bucks. I am not the risk taker. And I'm like, this thing is kind of scratched up. Will it clean up? Will it even work? Is it water damaged? Like, why is this here for five bucks? Yes, Riff is like, you know, you should get this thing. Like, this would look so good on your Wii U kiosk because currently I have a black pad and, you know, obviously the white one is the one you saw in the stores. But I just kind of hemmed and hauled around and before you knew it, yeah, I'll take this head. So I pick it up for five bucks. I'm sitting there walking, thinking to myself, you know, I did kind of second guess myself, like maybe it won't work. Maybe this really won't work for five dollars. But either way, I'll take it for five, maybe take it to the convention, Southeast Game Exchange, which we're here for, and take it later and go do a trade with it broken. All the buttons are clicky, all the levers are clean, there's no like crunchiness inside of it, anything like that. Even just like we were looking online, you could even sell. The, the battery pack for like 30 bucks, people do it. Your riff was like, all right, you lost it, I'm taking it, this is mine. Even if this is broken, which I doubt it because it doesn't look messed up enough, it just looks like it was unplayed for a long time and dirty, this is worth having. That night, NES Addict, he 
sends me a video of him plugging it in. I'm gonna bet to say this is gonna work. I'm gonna bet this is gonna work. I would almost bet my life on it. I went home that night, I plugged that Wii U gamepad in. All right, let's see if the $5 Bob Wii U remote that Riff bought is functional. Well, the fact that there's a battery light, that's probably a good sign. $5 Wii U pad. Ridiculous. It turned on right away with no problem. And I could see the disappointment in NES Addict's eyes. Do you think he should have taken the deal? Uh, I guess. He made a mistake. Well, a rookie mistake. He's okay. To be honest, I got a moment of happiness seeing his the sorrow in his eyes. And I, I, I could see the actual aggression. Ow! Oh, dang it. Nice. I liked it, if I'm fully honest. But don't worry, Jay. I actually bought it for you anyway. No way! But I just, I, to be honest, I wasn't gonna give it to you if it didn't work because I don't wanna give you a broken product, but it works, so it's for you. I want you to have it for your kiosk. That's the real truth. Happiness. He gave it to me! <laughs> for my son! No, 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 go ahead. For my son! For my son! Is the taco stand here now? Wait, Ricky. Shout out cameraman. Yeah, look at that. Coke, uh, donuts, a NES attic shirt. <laughs> it's a cool flea market, ain't it? Eh. Happiness. Pokemon. Pokemon, how many men? Uh, three packs in here and one pack here. I'm gonna catch them all. Dang. We're walking by and we're like, okay, this has been a pretty cool day actually. He got some cool NES stuff, Castle Gray Skull stuff. I got a game pad. I got Ninja Turtles for two bucks each. This is going great. Let's kind of walk out. But as we're walking out, we see this booth. Yes. Oh, Walkman. It's crazy. With this guy that has random 90s stuff, but it's nothing that we're like gonna buy, but even though it is cool 90s stuff, little Walkmans and cassettes, and NES Addict is walking by and he kind of grazes over the booth a little too quickly, and I was looking right where he was looking and I'm like, oh, and I pick up one of the Walkmans to look at and I see a controller that says Tiger on it. So we're sitting here and I'll be honest, we're all kind of poking around and I'm seeing this. I'm like, oh, it's, I'm all about like the colors. I love old vintage colors and stuff like that. And I'm like, what is Before I could even finish my what is this sentence in my brain, I realized that the Tiger controller is linked up with a cord all the way going down when you lift up and our zone is attached right at the end. It's for the R zone right here. Look, you got Knights right here. Sega Knights is right in there. You can see it. It's got the flap down for your eyepiece, straps around your head. You put it on. Some epic commercials, epic advertising back in the day. So if you've never used an R zone, each game cartridge has its own transparent LCD display screen, which is projected onto a mirror surface held in front of the player's yeah. eye. I, I know Jay was jealous, but I think I saw Oh, you got me slipping, dude. I caught him good. Man. Flipping riff with the R zone. Psh. I died a little inside, and at least three tears came out. Some of the cool vintage stuff lying around, stuff we like to look at, so. I'm glad y'all had a good time. Yeah, we had fun too. When I pick it up, I'm super excited because, again, as I've been saying throughout a long time for now, if you're looking for it, if you like it, it's something you're looking for, I'm probably not looking for it because I look for the weird, the eclectic, the random, and the R zone is the definition of this. I mean, so. Yo, I'm playing right now, you guys just can't see it. No, I'm not. You put this stupid thing on your head, you fold down a little screen, you play the game through here. And when I picked it up, the guy only wanted 10 bucks and Knights was in there. Knights, yes, for the R-Zone. Yes, there was a Knights for the R-Zone, which is crazy because honestly, there's almost not even like gameplay of this thing on YouTube. I'm not gonna lie, both of us, as we walked out, we're like, dang, that, that's actually a really cool score. Dude, that is it's super It's one epic. of those really cool things. For 10 bucks too, I feel like it's more on, on line of like, game hunting days back in the day. Absolutely. It's like, oh dude, I found an R zone today with knights and the controller for 10 bucks. Whole thing for 10 bucks, I walked away that night. Again, value isn't my reason for something like this because this is just strictly for a set piece behind me because it looks so cool. These things sell 
for a lot more money than $10. And just the game Nights alone, people sell these things for like 60, 70 bucks on eBay. I love it. It's a steal, man. I see why it didn't do well either. You're right. It's definitely pushing down my eye. It's making me feel like I got like a lazy eye while I play. Don't, don't play this around your friends. It doesn't, uh, doesn't make you look. I like it. ABGN sparked my interest in it. Now I have the R zone and I'm cool. R zone stands for Rift's zone. That's amazing. Awesome. Man. Really yeah, cool dude. find. I'm not cool, really, honestly. You suck. Honestly? Yeah. Do you really think I suck? Look at that hair. What's wrong with my hair? But I am so much. Oh, but I am be so much. Where's Ricky? Oh, I got it. Dude, when you found this, I was like, man, that is like such a classic game find. Just it's so old school, it's Tiger. Freaking Arzan, dude. Sorry, white Ricky. So today felt amazing. I haven't had a day that felt like this in a long time to where I genuinely felt like I was like at a new place in the middle of nowhere just looking for games. It's like the way you see on American Pickers that we all desired when we first saw the show. Like I don't want to go where anybody goes. I don't want to go to any video game people that are going to know about video games. Not that I'm trying to undercut them, but that you just want to have fun digging and looking. A lot of times when we go to the flea markets, I'm always like, Shh, don't let them know you really want it. This guy from a mile away is like, I want that! And like walks over. He hawing around with a bunch of people out in the country having fun, eating fried green tomatoes and eating riff. Eating riff? Not eating. Eating grits! Definitely better looking than 8-Bit Eric. <laughs> that was almost a couple. Thank you. <laughs> huh? Is it because you're a white cracker? Wow! Actually, when your voice hurts, they say you're supposed to eat a white cracker and some ginger ale. So, good old Riff! Listen, there's a wild bear over there. We are here spying on a wild bear and on the hunt out here. Well? Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, White Ricky. You have anything to say about being the cameraman today? Hopefully, I didn't screw it up too bad. It's one of those things too, like you would never be like, oh, we're probably gonna find an art zone today. Exactly. That's why it's so awesome. That was me saying the NES addict about my voice kind of crap. We call him on the new side. Milky Ricky. Oh, Milky Ricky. Bye. 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 Jay, you need to call him on the radio. He's wearing short. Does it get more country? And then we did it. got this. Throw in. Beep, 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 beep. That's sign. Yeah. <laughs> Video game sign. Sign. I mean, he did his fair share of crack cocaine, but casual. Is that the sound he makes? <laughs> and I, I think I saw like a Trump riding a tank actually in the back.